Hi, welcome to another edition of Think About It, the podcast from Houston Christian University. I'm Dr. Gary Hartenberg, the director of the Honors College at the University and associate professor of philosophy here. Joining me today is a freshman student, Linnea Hagman. Linnea is a student in the Honors College. Thanks for joining me, Linnea. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So we'll kind of run through some, some things about you and then maybe talk a little bit about the Honors College and your experience at the university. So you are from Oregon and uh, you have a major at the university. Yeah, so I came in with a major in accounting and then after one week of accounting classes, I decided to switch. Okay. So yeah, now I am double major in business and English. Okay, so you yeah. stayed in the business world. Mm -hmm. you, you're keeping the business major, but you're out on accounting. Out of accounting. Okay. Yeah. And uh, no offense to HCU's fine accounting professors, oh, no. I'm sure. Not so, at all. But what yeah. was it that tipped you off? Accounting is not for me. Well, I thought that it was going to be more math, and okay. it was basically spreadsheets. Okay. And a lot of confusing language. And you just want to be out in nature all the time? Is that... <laughs> We'll see. Maybe more writing and less okay. numbers. Less numbers. That's what I'm leaning towards. Okay. Yeah. So, but then, so the, the switch from accounting to, I guess, a general business major, is that? Yeah. yeah okay. Yes. That makes sense. But then jumping all the way across campus to the English department too, what's going on there? So I just enjoy writing okay. and I am pretty good at it. So I figure it's good to work on my strengths. Okay. And I know that in the business world, they also need people who can write and communicate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, you're from Oregon. You're a, now a business and English major, a double major, and you're in the Honors College. Yes. Okay. And uh, you live on campus or you commute? Yes, I'm on campus. Okay. Yeah. And um, what's that like? Do you, you, I mean, Houston, was it a big change coming down from Oregon? Oh, or? my. Yeah. Yes, yes, a very big change. My hometown had about 6,000 people, okay. and Houston is, I think, the largest city in the U.S.? Close, we're the third largest. Third largest. The fourth largest, okay. depending on how you count. There are about 3 million, 4 million people in the area. Yikes. Yeah. So that was a big difference. Okay. And also the humidity here. I okay. was not used to that. No, no that. one ever is. No, yeah. no. I don't yeah. think I want to get used to it either. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. I've I found, uh, to be honest, that you, you eventually will get used to it. Mm -hmm. It hit me. I had been here for about a year and a half, and I was going with a friend to a baseball game in July. And we got out of the car and I thought, wow, it's, it's not a bad day for a game. And we were going to the, the Astros game downtown and they have the retractable roof. So I said, well, do you think the roof will be open today? And my friend looked at me like I was on the moon or something. He was like, how, how hot do you think it is? And I was like, I don't know, 85? Because there's a limit, you know, if it's over this, they close the roof. And I pulled out my phone and it, the heat index was 101. And I was like, oh, it doesn't feel that bad. So I can still tell when it's hot, but you know, there comes a point where you just don't care anymore. 101? So, no. Yeah, no. no. So the roof was closed that day. So, Good. Yeah, but okay. Thankfully. Right. Um, so what's kind of life like as a freshman undergraduate at Houston Christian? So it's very different. And <laughs> different, okay. Very different. I don't think anything could have prepared me for college and starting out as a freshman. Okay, unpack that a little bit. Nothing could have prepared you. So you went to high school though, right? Yes, okay. I did. And high school did not prepare you for college? Oh, well, I have kind it's of It's a trick question. <laughs> so. No, it didn't. I'll say that. Okay. Um, I will say that I was homeschooled for a few years and then I went to public school. Okay. And then I went back to homeschooling. Okay. And I'm so thankful that I did not do public school for my whole okay you yeah. think public school would not have prepared you no okay no i what's different in public school the workload is a lot lighter a lot okay. lighter a lot in high lighter. school yes okay and i was doing a classical curriculum okay so a lot of reading a lot of writing mm -hmm. which is what the honors college is kind of centered around too we have students do a lot of reading and a lot of writing and talking yeah. and talking yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. there's a lot of that in my yeah. curriculum okay so that prepared me more but it was really weird to be away from family okay I think yeah, yeah. Okay. and just learning how to be an adult and you know you have to go buy laundry detergent 
Yeah. But that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. it is. I remember <laughs> discovering that the first time I went to college, I was like, oh, I'm, you know, my mom sent me, thanks mom, she sent me away to college with a bottle, you know, of laundry detergent. And I recognized it because it was the kind we had at home. And then that ran out and I go to the store and I'm like, where's the mm -hmm. detergent? And then it turns out if you buy just the detergent without the added fabric softener, it's much cheaper. It's like half yes. as, yeah, so, but I was like, I, I didn't know, mm -hmm. right? I should have known, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I pay attention to price now when right. I'm in stores. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. But I, so I washed my clothes like the rest of the year without any fabric softener. Apparently this was not good. This is not good. Okay. So there was sort of growing up, being mm -hmm. out on your own. Uh, so how come you're still here? I mean, I, to put it bluntly, like mm. if, it's, if it's difficult, if you maybe weren't very prepared for it, how come you're still here? I ask myself that question a lot. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think that being uncomfortable is good and it's very necessary to have that uncomfort and not really know what you're doing to be able to find what you need to do. Hmm. And that's not something that you can really be told how to do. You just have hmm. to go through it. Hmm. Um, that's what I found at least so far. And I do love HCU in the Honors College. Mm -hmm. So that's also keeping me here in the, the relationships that I've made with people. Mm -hmm. I, I genuinely love it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this idea that it's difficult, I'm not really sure what I should be doing. I'm not really sure why what I'm doing right now is, is worth that is valuable or worthwhile, but I, I want to stick it out because it seems I need to. Mm -hmm. you, okay. And also I've got great friends. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, so one thing we do in the honors college is every student gets a mentor. Right, so there are about 10 professors who teach in the program and all of them have students that they mentor. So who, who's your mentor? So my mentor is Dr. Elliot. Dr. Elliot. Yes. I was, for a minute there, I thought, is Linnea my mentee? Like, and I, <laughs> I was like, I don't think so, but this is going to be really embarrassing. So Dr. Barbara Elliot, mm -hmm. professor in the Honors College. Uh, she, I don't know if you know this, but she has been teaching in the Honors College longer than anyone who teaches in the Honors College right now. Really? Yep. She was here before that. I was here. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So talk about your relationship with Dr. Elliot. What's that like? Yeah. So our last in-person meeting lasted about two or three hours. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so that should tell okay. you a bit. Yeah. We just kept on talking and it felt like 40 minutes. Okay. So she is so cool. Right. Just her experiences and to be able to to have a mentor like her mm -hmm. is I just feel so blessed mm -hmm. and that wouldn't have happened without the Honors College and we <laughs> during that meeting we talked about normal stuff normal life mm. stuff I told her about my boy issues and then we talked about school for a little bit too so it's an actual relationship and okay and she's amazing so I love having her as a mentor okay yeah I remember going into her office the first time and looking at the wall and I'm like, that's a picture of Dr. Elliot with the president of the United States. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I guess <laughs> she's done some things in her life. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And she was a duchess. Oh, right. And she's a member of royalty yeah. for a while. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, and she meets with you mm -hmm. like, and she meets with the other students she mentors. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All and right. she cares about us. And right. You she can definitely tell. does. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 One of the things, uh, she did that I really, really appreciated was, you know, during the pandemic, um, she started up, she emailed me. Uh, she's like, Gary, I, I want to uh, start a, a prayer group, prayer list, right? So we, uh, she coordinated, we just emailed all the students, we emailed alumni, we got alumni, uh, I mean, she organized all this, but she got alumni who weren't, who had graduated from the Honors College, weren't here anymore, but she reached out to all of them and said, hey, if you want to get together or just on your own pray for these honors college students, they're really struggling or whatever they mm -hmm. need. Um, and we had alumni, you know, say, hey, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, and wow. so she organized that. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why we were able to, uh, you know, our students were able to do so well during that mm -hmm. time is because of the prayers of, of our alumni and especially Dr. Elliot, who, yes. who prayed herself and organized all of that. Okay, so you've got a real gem of a mentor in Dr. Mm -hmm. Elliot. Uh, talk to me about 
you know, books you're reading and honors, what, what that experience is like. Oh, wow. I have loved the books. From last semester, my favorite might have been Nick Ethics, Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics, yes, we call it when I can't we're being. It. Oh, you can't. So you I just can't. say, but it does. It does make you sound like a like a real professional. Exactly. Because in when we at philosophy parties, when I go to them with other philosophers, we don't say Nicomachean Ethics. Mm -hmm. We say Nick e Nick Ethics. Yeah, yeah, the cool people say that. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. So you're just picking that up on your own. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what what did you so describe? like how you read this, where you read this, the preparation, give, give our listeners sort of a sense of what that, what's required and then how you take care of those obligations. Yeah, so I read it over about a week, I think. Yeah, give or take. And I have to read in absolute quiet okay. because these books, the ideas are so dense. Mm. You have to give it your complete focus. Mm. And Taking notes too helps a lot to solidify the ideas mm -hmm. in your mind. Okay, and that's what I find, and you know we have to. So okay, yeah, yeah. okay. So you read it over yeah. the course of about a week. Mm -hmm. Complete silence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Taking Just notes. you and the book. Yes. And taking notes. Okay. Yes. So you do that preparation, then you go to s seminar, mm -hmm. uh, and the seminars are two hours long. What's what, so? But what's that like? Yeah, the seminars fly by. They do. All, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, and I go in with questions, and I leave with more questions, and... <laughs> How, so, I'm just going to ask, because I wonder, I think some of our listeners, and sometimes I genuinely wonder, how is that good to go into class with some questions about Aristotle and his views about ethics, and then you leave with more questions? I think that questions show that you thought deeply about a subject. Mm -hmm. And it also showed me that there's so much more to learn. Okay. And it definitely humbled me, too, mm. because I thought we must have the answers somewhere. And I'm finding there's so many questions that mm. I don't even know where to start on. Okay. So it's, it's almost comforting to know that there are so many questions and things that we don't know. And maybe we can't know. Okay. Do you remember which professor you had for any of the sessions on Aristotle? I don't. Okay, know. putting you on the spot. Okay, yeah. but uh, okay, so you go with questions, you leave with questions. What happens in the meantime, like mm. in between the going and the leaving? A lot of, a lot of talking, but a lot of silence too in mm. seminar, mm -hmm. and we jump around from topic to topic it seems like sometimes, but then at the end, it's beautiful because it all comes together, at least mm. for the good discussions. Okay. And it's really fascinating to investigate the, what we think the author meant okay. by what he wrote. And then it's just, it's so rewarding too, at the end. Mm. We feel like we gain wisdom and also have more questions, but okay. it's, I can just describe it as rewarding. Huh. It's strange how that happens. You, you, you think you've gained wisdom and you also have more questions, mm -hmm. right? So, okay, all right. Um, so you, you loved Aristotle. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Least favorite book from that first semester. Oh, where you studied all, like a, a survey of the mm -hmm. ancient Greeks, right? Homer, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, onward, okay. Least favorite, probably Aristophanes' The Clouds. Oh, you didn't like The Clouds. It's not that I didn't like it. Okay. I just didn't understand why it was written. Okay. It seemed to be okay. a mockery of everything, which I kind of enjoyed, but it just uh. didn't make sense to me. Okay, yeah. Now, so I said this is a, a bit of a trick question because mm -hmm. so sometimes we'll, we'll ask students this uh, uh, in an oral exam. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of letting out the secret to the whole world, but, uh, but and now you know, right? So. Sometimes the question is, t tell us about your least favorite book, and then it's make the case for why, that, why mm. students in the future should continue to read that book. Uh -oh. So maybe you started on some of that, um, but you think you can do that? I think I could. Okay. Yes. So Linnea Hagman, why should future Honors College students continue to read The Clouds by Aristophanes? Hmm. I think that this book is a good example of 
how to not take life too seriously. Okay. And that is very necessary because oftentimes we do take life way too seriously. And being able to mock certain things mm. and also not to take ourselves too seriously is a very important and learned skill and we can learn that from Aristophanes. Okay, all right. Uh, I'll give that a, a good grade. Yeah, actually, we don't we don't really grade uh, here, um, but uh, okay. So um, now, do you ever think about English as a major? I suppose that could be you know very clearly. You're probably reading a lot of the same works in your courses for your major. As you, there's some overlap. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe the thing about business, like how how do, do you ever wonder? going from business class to honors class to English class, like, does all of this fit together? I do wonder. Okay. And I, have you come to anything, or are you still in the wondering about it all? I'm still wondering. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely still wondering. But I think that a lot of the business ideas and what they teach, a lot of it is the same ideas from what we're reading with the Greeks and in the Honors College. And say, say more about that. That seems a little strange. It does seem a little bit strange, but... Because we're 21st century capitalists. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. But the things we're reading in the Honors College, it's about people, and people mm. fundamentally stay the same. Okay. So when there's truth that we can find in the Honors books and what I'm reading in English, it can generally be applied to people now, too. And the mm. only thing that's really changed is culture, and technology, mm. but if you take away your cell phone and your glasses and put you out in the woods, that's basically what people were like 3,000 years ago. The, the ancient Greeks were out in the woods? Sure. You know okay, I mean. I'm, yeah. I'm just, now I'm, now I'm picking at your words <laughs> like we're in seminar. Okay. Um, okay, uh, well, do you have any, have you thought uh, far enough ahead or clear, any clarity about where you want to go? Mm. I mean, I realize you're not even done with your freshman year. But do you have thoughts about the future? I have thoughts. I think that I know where I don't want to go okay. more than where I do want to go. Okay. I did want to be a lawyer okay. about a year ago, but 80 hours a week is just not doable for You don't me. want to work as a lawyer no, for 80 hours? Okay. No. Okay. So I'm just really open to the mm. Lord leading me. Okay. And we'll see where that goes. I still have some time. You know? Yes, yes, you do. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. looking at internships, but yeah. I am just unsure right now. Okay. Um, so maybe one of the last things I'll ask is sometimes people listen to this and they're thinking about whether HCU is a good place, maybe the Honors College in particular. Do you have a, a thought or a word about why students should maybe look into it more carefully or mm. bump it to the top of their list or something like that? Yeah. I, I will say that when I was touring colleges, when I toured HCU, I was here in person, um, and when I was here, it felt like a place I could become more myself. Hmm. And I think that you can get an education a lot of places, mm -hmm. but at HCU, that's what stood out to me the most. Hmm. And the Honors College was a big draw for me. So I would highly encourage really anyone to at least look into it and really the books that we're reading and what we do at the Honors College with discussion, I can't think of anything that could prepare us more for going out into the world in whatever field or whatever job or career people choose. Mm. So that's my pitch. Thanks very much, Linnea. I don't yeah. think I could have said it better myself. So uh, we'll uh, close it up for today. Thanks again for listening to this episode of Think About It, a podcast from Houston Christian University. I'm Dr. Gary Hartenberg, director of the Honors College, here with Linnea Hagman, student in the Honors College. If you'd like to learn more about the Honors College program, you can find us at hc.edu slash honors college. Thanks again, everybody. Take care.